morning. Um, I'm just going to say a quick prayer. So I ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes with me. Um, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come into your house today, Lord, just to bless you, Lord. Lord, I ask you to continue to help us move on in our lives, Lord, and, and keep being holy just like you want us to be, Lord. Help us to strive to be better people and all, Lord, and help us to be better aware of our surroundings, Lord, and help us to be more safe during this time, Lord. Help us to be more holy and help others more, Lord. Help us to stop being so selfish, Lord, and to be, and to be more helpful to, to everybody, Lord. Help us to be somebody that helps our whole community and not just ourselves, Lord. Help us to be someone who turns our, our whole community towards you, Lord. Help us to be people who strive to be leaders. Help us to be people who don't try to stand stand behind, but fo- not just follow, but also lead. Help us learn how to follow us to be able to lead better, Lord. Help us to be able to know the hearts of people around us, Lord. And to help us to not judge some, somebody so quickly about how they look, Lord. Help us to look on, look at what's going on in their spirit, Lord. Help us just to know, help us to be better at knowing when is the right time to say something to somebody and when is not, Lord. Help us to know when is, when is not the right time to tell somebody to keep going when, when they, help us not just to Thank you. tell somebody something that they don't need to know, Lord. Help us not trying to impart our knowledge on something that they don't even need, Lord. Help us not to be, help us not be trying to be helpful and be hurtful to somebody, Lord. Yes. Help us to stop trying to help somebody and then turn around and be spiteful towards them, Lord. Yes. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 9. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the, wo- in the belly, I knew thee, and be- before thy comest to forth the Lord of the womb, I sanctioned thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. Then I said, Ah, O oh Lord, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thy shalt go out all that I shall see thee, and whatsoever command thee out shall speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee of the liver. Thee say, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put the words into thy mouth. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody clap your hands and give God praise in this place. a great God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Anybody? Sing with me. 
Say, I lift my hands. I lift my hands. To give you glory. I lift my hands. I lift my hands. To give you praise. And I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. And I will. Yeah. 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 Say, I lift my hands. Somebody lift your hands all over this place. We said we'll praise him. We'll bless him. Because he's great. And because he's mighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Come on, somebody open up your mouth right there and just worship him. Yeah, yeah. The real simple worship says, Great and mighty is our God, is our God. Great and mighty is our God, is our God. Let me hear you say that. Great and mighty is our God. Is our God great? Great and mighty is our God. Is our we gonna do it again? Great and mighty is our God. Is our God great and mighty? Is our God? Is our God? You say great and mighty is our God. Is our yeah. God great? Great and mighty is our God. Is our God. And we call you ruler, ruler. Is our God? Is our God ruler, ruler? Is our God? Is our God? You say ruler, ruler. Is our God? Is our God ruler? Ruler, ruler. We call you ruler, ruler is our God, is our God. Ruler, ruler is our God, is our God. You say, ruler, ruler is our God, is our God. Ruler, ruler, ruler is our God, is our God. I call you Savior, Savior is our God. Is our God Savior? Savior is our God. Is our God? You say, Savior, Savior is our God. Is our God Savior? Savior is our God. Is our God? Healer, healer is our God. Is our God my healer? Healer is our God. Is our God? You say, Healer, healer is our God. Is our God? Healer, healer is our God. Hey, uh, and I call you Jesus. Jesus is our God. Is our God? Jesus, Jesus is our God, is our God. You say, Jesus, Jesus is yeah. our God, is our God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is our God. One more time. And I call you Jesus. Jesus is our God, is our God. Jesus, Jesus is our God. Is our God, you say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus yeah. is our God, is our God, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus here we go, God. oh, how you live, how you live, yeah. up. is our God, is our God, high, how you live, yeah. it up. is our God, is our God,
mighty is our God, is our God. Great and mighty is our God, is our God. You say, great and mighty is our God, is our God. Great and mighty is our God, is our God. Oh, great and mighty is our God, is our God. Great and mighty is our God, is our God. You say great and mighty is our God, is our God. Great and mighty is our God. Here we go. Oh, we say hallelujah. 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 We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. Is our God? Is our God? Can you help us sing that? Is our God? Is our God? Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you. Great and mighty is our God. Is our God? You're my ruler. You're my healer. You're my sustainer. You're my provider, you're my provider, you're my provider. You're my protector, you're my protector, you're my protector. You're my protector, you're my protector, you're my protector. Oh, 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 is our God. Is our God, yeah. Is our God? Is our God? Yeah, yeah. Is our God? Is our God? Somebody lift your hands right there, and with your hands lifted, open up your mouth and just begin to worship your God. Yeah, is our God?
Lord could stand against. Then what can stand against? Oh, 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 oh. Can stand again. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm Come on, sing it so heaven can hear you. It may look like, it look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like, it may look like I'm surrounded, hey. but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Hey. It may look situation in your life right now and just begin to put a word on it 
Come on. I want you to look at it right now. Just put a word on it. I fret not because of evildoers. Because you relied on me today, you're going to soon get cut down. Because you didn't trespass me today, you're going to soon get cut down. Come on, what word can you put there? I still got the victory. It may look like I'm losing right now, but I still got the victory. B-I-C-T-O-R-Y. Victory is what I got. B-I-C-T-O-R-Y. Victory is what I got. I was always taught victory had a sound. I was always taught victory has a sound. Listen. Victory has a sound and defeat is always quiet. Victory has a sound but defeat is always quiet. Why is defeat quiet? Because if he could close your mouth, you'd have lost your destiny. Defeat is always quiet because he want to sneak up on you. Depression is always quiet because he want to sneak up on you. Diabetes is always quiet because he want to sneak up on you. Trouble in your family is always quiet because he want to sneak up on you. But I need somebody that got the victory for real. To open up their mouth and just begin to give that sound of victory. Hey! Hey! So victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to him said victory belong to victory belong hey come on I want you to sound victorious victory belong yeah to Victory belong, yeah, to one more time. Victory belong. Victory belong, yeah, yeah. Victory belong. To, to victory belong, yeah. Last time all over this place. Victory belong to victory belong, yeah. yeah. It won't always be like this. The Lord will protect that concerning me. Sooner or later, it's going to turn in my favor. It's turning around for me. It won't always be like this. Listen, I just want to encourage you. The Lord will perfect that concerning me. And sooner or later, it's going to turn in. My favor is turning around for me, around for me, around for 
for me around for me it's turning around so around around for come on if you believe it's turning around for you around for this you gonna have to sing a lie because the devil don't like that yeah it's turning around one more time around for me around for it's turning around around for A change is coming for me if I stand strong and believe and there's no reason to die I know he's working it out it's turning around say it again around around for oh, around for me around for me hey it's turning around last time around around for turning around around for me hey it's turning turn it around he's gonna work in your favor hey! and I said late late in God's gonna he's gonna work Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, something happened right here at church after Sunday school. I got called over to a young man that came to church and he gave me something. He put something in my hand. He said, take this. Because I think I'm because I'm, I don't want to use it. He gave me a knife and said that the enemy was telling him just to go ahead and, and cut himself and go and hide somewhere so no one can find him. And so I'm sitting there, and y'all, I, I had to feel a little 
guilty because at first when he called me over, I was just like, now what does he want? Can I be honest? People can sit right next to you, so depressed, and the enemy is telling them, just take yourself out. And they'll be in church for two hours and leave out of church feeling the same way. And I say I'm my brother's keeper. But how dare I not have time to talk to my brother or sister who could be experiencing this depression to the point when they want to take themselves out. Have you ever been there? And you come to church and you're wondering how come nobody, nobody in church took time to listen to you? How come the leaders couldn't feel what was going on with you? I'm telling you, when he gave me that knife, Sister Young, something in my spirit start grieving. And I'm just like, really? But I thank God that he came to church. I thank God that he came and received the help in the church. And we'll sit here and we'll judge people because of how they look. Not knowing the hell they're going through. Amen? Not knowing what the enemy is telling them. So, Brother Billy, I want to tell you that we love you. We love you. Can you stand up real quick? Can y'all just get up and show him some love? Can you just stop for a second and go and give him a hug and just show him some love? Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. That song, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by him, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And if you're feeling like Brother Billy's feeling and you don't want to say anything, just raise your hand. Depression is real. But my God is stronger than depression. My God is so much greater. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you ain't never been there, you don't understand what he's going through. If you've never been there, you don't understand how it feels when you want to just take yourself out. But if you've been there, then you can relate to what he's going through. Amen? And all he needs is let somebody just tell him that he matters. Tell him that it's okay. That we would enjoy at night when the joy comes in the morning, knowing that God has not forgotten about him, Joy. If you've never been there, then you can't relate to it. Jesus. Jesus. Ah. Melissa Shakira, I remember when I was first called to preach, that song that I heard was by Shekinah Glory, Say Yes. And then God was saying, there's more that I require from you. Will your heart and soul say yes? He said, don't be traditional. Don't be churchy. Be relational. Be open. Because sometimes God would do things that's not usual. Sometimes it's not comfortable. Amen? With your heart and soul, say yes. I tell a story, Sister Young. When I started hearing the voice of God, I heard God tell me to go into in the church and, and I used to pass if I can do a cartwheel. I was skinny then. And I remember I did the cartwheel with the pastor's permission. And somebody from the back of the church ran up and said, I know God is real. Because the pastor said, if you can ask God whatever you want, and he'll let you know he's real. So the guy said, I asked God to have somebody do a cartwheel. And that guy is saved and he's a preacher now. So with your heart and soul, say yes. Can you sing that song for me? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Stand to your feet as you hear the words of this song, please. And this is so personal. This is so personal. Amen. Jesus. 
Jesus. There is all that I require of thee. Are you saying, God, use me in my house? 
Are you posting on TikTok the things of God? Are you just dancing? Will your heart and soul say yes? You heard the young lady read this morning, God said, before you were born, I knew you. And before you came out of your mother's womb, he already purposed something for you. You already had an assignment. And don't say I'm too young or I just got saved. God said he'll put the words in your what? In your mouth. Amen. People are not saved by your words, by the, by the words of God. And his words will not return back into him void. Can he use you to speak his word? Can you begin to speak life and not death? Can you speak blessings and not curses? There's more that God's requiring from us. And y'all, sometimes it's just a conversation. Sometimes it's just telling somebody it's going to be okay. Sometimes it's just a hug, just showing love to somebody. Amen? And that don't cost you nothing. Will your heart and your soul say yes? Yes. We talked about that we're in the last days and people are falling away from faith, but what have we done to bring them back? Have we gone into the fire? Have we snatched them out? Are we sitting there and we're okay because we're okay? There's more, Sister Woodson. There's more, Mother Young. There's more that God's requiring from us. I heard what Roman said. You know, he said that you tell people it's, they're okay and, and, and they're not. And sometimes, y'all, we, we have tunnel vision where all we see is up front and here. We don't see what's on the sides of us. We come into the house of God, Sister Mickey, sometimes we have tunnel vision. Amen? I'm just looking up to the front. I'm not looking on the side of me, seeing that somebody is contemplating suicide or murder. But all I see is that I'm good. There's more that God's requiring from his children. Amen? There's more. We have a responsibility to the kingdom of God. The Bible says the kingdom of God has suffered violence. And the violence take away what? By force. By force. In other words, get out of your comfort place. Stop being casual because you're going to be a casualty. Amen? We're in a warfare. and We know that we're, we're in the last days. I don't have to keep telling you guys that. We see it. We've been hearing it forever. But now it's closer. And so it's time for us to gird ourselves, put on our whole, whole armor of God, and begin to fight. If not for someone else, fight for yourself. Fight for your own peace. <laughs> fight for your own victory. Fight for your own family. Amen? If it's not for me, then fight for you. Amen? It's time for us to what? Fight. Amen? There's more that God's requiring from us. Can we give God a praise just right there? Can we go ahead and praise the Lord? Can we give God a praise? Just give God a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My God, now you can have your seats. Now you can have your seats. And good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm so grateful to God for today, and this is our youth day, and I want to thank God for our newest member that joined last week. Sister Paula, are you here? <laughs> Praise God. Is she here? Stand to your feet and see you. Our newest <laughs> member, God bless you. <laughs> Praise God. We thank God for you, and we have visitors in the house. Can I get the visitors to stand real quick? Can I get the visitors to stand? Travis, you're not a visitor. Can I get all the other visitors to stand? To God be the glory. God bless you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Praise God. I told Brother Travis, you're not a visitor. Um, I think I performed your wedding, didn't I? Amen. You're still married. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. It was so good when I saw him. And Sister Joyce, it's good to see you this morning as well. Amen. God bless you. Praise God. God bless you. Um, I'm smiling, y'all. I had the opportunity yesterday to take uh, my um, youngest grandchildren shopping. The, the twins and, and the little two-year-old. We went to the house and I had planned to take Sanai shopping, the six-year-old, and Sister Nina said, well, let's get Mariah. I said, Mariah, she just two. So went to the house and had Sanai and Mariah get ready to go, and then um, Sean don't like shopping. So Sean was the only child left home because the other kids that went, had gone to a birthday party. So Sean was on his electronics, and he realized that he would be the only child home except the baby. And Sean said, um, 
Y'all going where? I said, we're going shopping. He looked at me, he said, you know what? I need to give my electronics a break. The six-year-old. He said, how many stores you going to? <laughs> I'm not sure. He says, okay, I'll go. Now, Sean is not a shopper. Sean is not a shopper. So he said, I'll go, and everybody was like, ooh. And then we had to give him, I guess, the, the four of my one. We're not going to do his. We're not going to do that. We're not going to go here. And so he said, I still want to go. So he got dressed, and he, he came shopping with us, and, and he enjoyed himself. You know, on the way back home, because I think we went to, what, two stores? We went to two stores. We ate pizza. And on the way back home, he said, so where are we going next? <laughs> I'm looking at Sean like, I said, like, he said, what store are we going to next? I said, Sean, we're done. He goes, oh, I want to go to Target. <laughs> I said, why do you want to go to Target? He said, because there's toys there. It's like, oh, but we're not going to Target. We're going home. He went, oh. So he was just asking the question, what's next? I'm, I'm looking at somebody who don't like to shop, who loathes shopping, but he said at the house, I need to, I need to give my electronics a break. So in other words, I don't want to be home with mom and daddy. Because <laughs> nope, everybody was all seven, no, all six kids would have been gone. The baby was still there, but all six kids would have been gone, and Sean's just like, I'm not going to be here with those two. <laughs> so I'd rather go shopping than to stay here with those two. And we ended up having a real good time, and Grandma didn't go, she didn't break the bank, so y'all, I'm learning how to shop. <laughs> Everybody didn't need everything, amen? As long as they ate and we had a good time, we did go get ice cream from Ellis Brothers, and that, that was fun. Okay. So, and Sean was just like, what's next? Can you imagine going to a, with a non-shopper and saying, what's next? I know you train your husband to shop. I'm talking about other people that don't really go shopping. <laughs> it's like, what's, what's next? Praise God. My husband is like Sean. He's like, I'll see you when you get back, baby. Uh, he'll sit in the truck listening to music. He does not like to shop with me. He said, because you don't even buy stuff. You just go look. So he don't understand the shopping thing, Sister, Sister Woodson. Praise God. So honestly, a lot of times we're asking the question, y'all, what's next? After you've had fun, after you've done what you were supposed to do, how many of us have that, what's next? What's next in my life, Latoria? Am I, am I going to get married? Am I going to buy my house? Am I going to get a new job? Am I going to grow my hair back? Am I going to get skinny? <laughs> you know, what's, how many of us waiting for the next? Waiting for the next, because if you're not waiting for the next, that means you're just existing, amen? There should always be a what next. There should always be an anticipation for something better, something different, amen? We shouldn't just be comfortable just being here. How many of us are comfortable just being here? And if you are, don't raise, don't, don't, don't raise your hand, amen? There's always should be a what next. And y'all, I, I have to, before I even get started, you know that there is a, there's a war going on right now. You know that, right? Between Russia and Ukraine. Y'all know that, right? Um, our president warned the Americans that was in Ukraine to leave maybe two weeks ago. He said, intimate, it's going to happen. You need to leave. Some of them heed the warning. Some of them decided to what? Stay. Stay. He warned them two weeks ago that it was going to be a war. And not that President, um, was it Putin, was saying, because he had all his troops around Ukraine, and they were waiting, I think, for the Olympics to be over. The Olympics were over, and two days later is when he hit. So I think he was waiting for all his Olympians to come back home. Come on, can I be honest? Yeah. And so he was telling them that our president, it's time for you guys to get out of Ukraine. But because they had wives and girlfriends, and they had been there for years, they were saying, we're not leaving. So I hear there's a war coming, but we're not preparing ourselves. <laughs> I hear something getting ready to happen, but Sister Young, I'm comfortable where I am, and I don't see no missiles yet. The enemy ain't hit yet, so I'm not preparing myself for a war. How many of us have not prepared ourselves for the war? Knowing that we're in a spiritual battle, but we are not prepared because we don't see him hitting our homes yet. Sister Latoya, when I read about what was happening with um, the Olympian, the young girl who was from Russia, who I think an ice skater who fell, I'm thinking about the pressure that she had 
Only God knows what she was told to win the goal so you can come back home because I'm getting ready to invade. Come on, somebody. Amen. So a lot of times we got to stand under pressure. How many of us, when pressure comes, we don't know how to stand? We don't know how to allow it not to, not to bother us. Amen. God tells us to count it all joy when you're faced with dire temptations because he got, he's doing something in you. But when we face with something, Brother Mark, we get upset. Amen. We're getting our feelings. We don't know how to stand. What you're standing on. I'm asking the question this morning, what's next? What's next for you? What's in it for you? What's next? I got saved, so what's, what's next? What do I do now? Do I just come to church and sit in a pew? What's next? I'm not going to say that what y'all doing, but what's next? The handwriting was on the wall. Russia was going to invade. And Ukraine, Brother Whitson, um, three days ago, was it three days ago? The 22nd, I think, is when, it, when they invaded. Amen? And the U.S., and other countries had pulled out of the country. They tried to, and they bombed the airport so that nobody can get out. So some stayed, and some, what's interesting, Dr. Young, some of them went back. Some Ukrainians went back, and they said, I would die for my country. They left even America, and they went back to their country saying, I'll be the last man standing. How many of us would fight for the kingdom of God? Knowing that the enemy is coming to steal, kill, and destroy, but God said, I come to give you what? Would you die for your faith? Or will you halt, tail, and run? What's next? As I continue to read the Bible, God took me to uh, the book of, of, was it Revelations? And Dr. Young, we've been hearing about the the rapture forever. We've been hearing that he's coming back ever since he left. Amen? But as we are hearing about it, in Matthew 24, it talks about the, I guess, the intense of the birth pains. We hear of wars and rumors of wars. We're hearing people are falling away, and we see all the earthquakes in the different places. We see all this happening. So, y'all, it's, it's more intense. But are we waiting for what's next? All the handwriting is on the wall. Are we just home watching TikTok? Or Netflix, or what's the other one? The free one, Prime. Prime. What are we doing? But, but we're just home entertaining ourselves, right? Uh, playing, what's that, what's that thing on Grand Theft Auto? What are we doing? What's the other thing y'all playing right now? Amen? Come on, talk about it. What's the game? Come, y'all know it, don't play. Because <laughs> we're spending hours doing all of that. But how much time are we spending getting our souls right? We're spending hours getting prepared to be the best that we could be in this electronic games or the best that we can be in our people. But what happens with our soul? Oh, don't get quiet on me. In the book of Revelations, God was talking to one of the apostles. His name was John. And he told him, Minister, can you go to um, first, I'm sorry, Sister Young, let's go to Revelations 1. I think I want to start at 19, when God was telling John, everything that you see, everything that you've seen, everything that you will see, I need you to write it down. I need for you to write it down in a book. Everything that you see, everything that you will see, everything that you have, you've seen, I want you to all write it down. How many of us have a journal? Writing stuff down, amen? God is giving uh, revelations to us, he's giving visions, he's giving signs to us, so he wants us to record that stuff so somebody else can read it and run with it, amen? So see y'all, Revelations chapter 1, verse 19. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which, stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. I want to focus on verse 19 and read that one more time. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Praise God. Father, we thank you for the reading and the hearing of the word. Now, Father, my job is to study your word, to show myself approved unto you, rightly dividing the word of truth. And Father God, I ask that you would do your job and bring those things back to my remembrance. I stand here to represent you, God. I ask God that you would use me however you see fit. Speak to me as you speak through me. Holy Spirit, have your way even now, that you would stand up and I would sit down and that you will begin to use this voice to talk to these, your people, this day. Let he that hath a hear, 
hear what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking into the church. Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 He told John, I want you to write down, Sister Young, everything that you see, everything that you have seen, everything that you shall see. So John began first to write about the churches. He wrote about how, how many, seven churches up in Young. He wrote about the good things, <laughs> the not so good things, and the real bad things. So he dealt with all the churches first, amen? He dealt with, brother, what's in seven churches? He said, God is speaking to you, and he has this to say against you. You do some things well, some things not so well, and some things you're horrible at it, amen? He's saying, return back to him. So God is saying, he that has an ear, let him hear what he's saying to what? The churches. So after John got done talking to the churches, Jesus said to him, now come up here. You've done that part to the churches. You've given the churches the information. Now look at somebody and say, what's next? What is next? You have what you need for life and for holiness. So what are you doing with it? He talked to the churches. And now he's saying, come up here. How many of you think God is calling you a little bit higher? You've gotten to a point right now when you're content. You know some scriptures. You can even quote some of them, amen? You know, we read the Bible here for three years in a row, Dr. Young, from, from the beginning to the end, so we know the scriptures. Okay, so now, what's next? I think in Revelation 4, he told him, I'm going to open the door for you. Come up here. So see, I'm read Revelation 4, verse 1. He's talking to John after he got done obeying God by talking to the churches. He said, now, John, I'm going to take you a little bit higher. I'm going to open a door for you. I need you to walk in this door. Revelations 4, 1, what does it say? After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. John had already written the things that had happened before and the things that were happening presently. Dr. Young, now he's saying, I'm going to show you what's going to happen in the future. What's next? How many of us want to know what's going to happen five years from now? How many of us want to know where we're going to be 10 years from now? Some of us that's 80 years old don't care about that right now. <laughs> but the young folks want to know, well, okay, what's next? Because I'm in this relationship, and I think I like her, or I like him, so what's next? Uh, 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 we've been having some issues, and, and I don't want to divorce this person, but what's next? My job is giving me a hard time, Joyce, and, you know, and, 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 and I don't know if I'm going to get a raise, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get terminated, so what's next? My thing is, if you want to know what's next, what you need to do is get on your knees and begin to pray to the Father who is eternal, the one who knows your beginning and your ending, the one who knows all about you. Cast the cares upon him, trust him with all your heart. He will, he will direct your path according to Jeremiah 29, 11, for he know the thoughts that he thinks towards what? You, thoughts of good, and to bring you to. So if you want to know what's next, the first thing you need to do is get on your knees and begin to talk to the person who has the next in his hand. So he's telling John, come up here. So the young, I'll open the door. He said, I'll stand at the door. What's he doing? How many of us have to open the door? You want to know what's next? Jesus is at the door. How many of us have not answered the door? Because we don't want to know what's next. We want to keep doing what we're doing. Because I'm good. Not God. I'm good. Amen? Shekinah, what's next? You know, this person tells me that they love me, and this person tells me that they're for me, but are they for real, for real? Amen? Because my discernment telling me they're lying. Should I go through this, or should I uh, just evade this whole situation here? God, what's next? Are you trying to teach me something in this bad relationship? Should I still go through it because you know what's in me, and you're trying to get me ready for the next one? Is this my forever, or is this my in-between? Come on, somebody, amen? What's next? You want to know what's next? He's telling John, John, come up here. So in other words, you got to come a little bit higher. Amen? you got to sometimes put your plate down. 
You got to spend time in the word. You got to spend time worshiping God. Amen. You got to let God know that you're serious. So sometimes knowing what's next means you got to come. Offer your body as what? A living sacrifice. You don't need to eat all that all the time. Amen. You don't need all that all the time. Amen. And you can spend more time in the Word and less time on Netflix. Less time on YouTube. Less time on TikTok. Less time on Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Amen. Amen. You can spend more time with God. If you want to know what plans he has for you, you have to ask the one who, who wrote the plan. Write the one who has your life in the palm of his hand. Not ask a person. If you're going to ask a person, that sounds like you're talking to a um, witch. She might know, but that's not always from God. Can I be honest? So, so y'all, he told him to come up here, and I will show you the things that is going to happen. Come up. You want to know what's going to happen? Come up. What's next? Come up. When I say that, all y'all just looking at me. How do I come up? And God, you come up by going down. He opposites. You go on your knees. That's how you come up in God. Humble yourself. Humble yourself and say, God, I need you to help me. Cast every care you have. Because he already know about it, Brother Woodson. We be trying to hide from God, acting like God's going to be embarrassed. God already knew our, our, our mess. Amen. So, Sister Young, when he told him, he said, I want to show you those things. And John said that in me, what he happened? He was in the spirit immediately, right? Verse 2. And immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Seems like John really saw some stuff, Sister Young. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how on the Mount of Transfiguration, he saw Jesus transfigured. I think it was Peter, James, and John. So they had a glimpse of heaven. They had a glimpse to see him in his glory. But this here vision, Chandra, was where he saw that heaven was what? Heaven was real. Heaven is real. And there's authority in heaven because Jesus is sitting on a, on a throne, which means authority. He's sitting on a throne in heaven, and the last time he saw him, he was getting ready to be ascended because he saw him with the, the piercing. He's, he saw him go up, and now he's seeing him lifted up. Can you imagine John saying, well, we did ask you what would happen, and you did tell us that some of us wouldn't die until we saw you in your glory. So is this what you told me when you were talking to me and Peter? John had not died yet, but he saw Jesus in his glory. Can you imagine when you, if you were one of his disciples and you lived with this man for three and a half years and he was very humbled, he was very human and all of a sudden you see him lifted up in heaven and he's saying to you, let me show you something. This is what you have been believing for. This is what I've been telling you. Can you imagine John's posture when he saw Jesus on the throne, lift it up. I think Isaiah said, and his train filled the temple, and the angels was crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Can you imagine seeing that? So John was just like, okay, what's next? So John was arrested for preaching the gospel. He was on an island, for, uh, death row, on Patmos forever. And in that island of Patmos, in prison, on death row, God showed him the vision of heaven. So it wasn't over because people were... <laughs> tell you it's over you got you know you got life in prison it's over but God revealed himself to him when he was in prison on death row come on somebody amen so what's next is there anything too hard for God it ain't over 
until God says it's over. So what's next, Quinlan? You're here, you're, you're ministering in song, and, and God is showing you something different, so he's telling you, come up. <laughs> 